it has a negative impact on the data. So by averaging these two numbers together, or if it turns out there were five of them, the first quarter of the first year, the first quarter of the second year, the first quarter of the third year, the first quarter, by averaging together all those individual first quarters, the S, this thing over here, what you're going to be getting is a pure measure of how much of an impact the S1, how much the first quarter of the year has on the data, basically ignoring or getting rid of that fact, the impact of the I. So essentially the calculation is to take all the first quarters, which is 928 in this case, plus 758, and in this case there's only two of them, so you divide it by two, but if there are three of them, you divide by three, or five of them, divide by five, and what do you get for that calculation? 843. So what we're saying is that the first quarter of the year, at least on our limited historical data, that the first quarter of the year, the data should be down by about 15, 14, 16% or 15% from the, what it should be according to the perfectly straight line. So now we're one step away from finishing up the problem, or two steps really. So now can somebody, well, the next step will be, and I, I'm sure if I asked you and gave you time, you can figure it out. What do you do next? Well, now we make a, now the, the, the question, I should have put down the question. The question is, and this is exactly the question on the test, and uh, make a forecast for the first quarter of 2010, which is the next year. Okay, forecast for the first quarter of 2010. Well, the equation, so what are you going to plug? So you're gonna, first of all, you're going to do it in two steps. First, you're going to make the straight line equation. You're going to plug in, let's say, a 9 over here and figure out where the straight line happens to be. Or you're going to go back to this equation and plug in a 9. Why a 9? Because 9 happens to be the next data point. We're just doing this in sequence. So if somebody plug in a 9 here, what do you get? Wait, when? Sorry, say it again. 18.536. Now, is that the answer? That would be the answer in chapter 13. But now we know that this quarter of the year is what? Historically speaking, that first quarter of the year is how much? Down by how much? It's down by about 15% off its, basically, its average. And therefore, how do you, you want to take this number and adjust it according to this S1. How do you adjust it? It's very simple. You multiply. By multiplying by 84, you're chopping off 16% right there. So the next step is to take this number, 18.536, 536 and multiply it by the S1. Why the S1? Because we're talking about the first quarter of the year. If you do this for the second quarter, you'd have to do the second quarter. Okay, so so how much is 18.536 times 0 0.843? 15 point what? 625? And that's the answer to the question. So our question was make a forecast for the first quarter of the year. We did this in, let me just summarize it. So we did we did it in, in three or four basic steps. First, we figured out the, the, tra the straight line by the B0, B1 of chapter 13. We then used that equation to basically forecast the straight line, the trend. We then took that trend and divided it into the Y to figure out how much of a discrepancy there was. And these numbers represent the discrepancy. We then organized all the discrepancies according to quarter. The first with the first and the first, the second with the second with the second, etc. Then when the question says, folks, give me another few seconds, Make a forecast, you make the forecast by plugging in the proper T number, the, for example, the next quarter will be the ninth T number, and then the last step is you adjust that number according to the S1 if it turns out to be the first quarter, and adjust it for the S2 if it turns out to be a second quarter.